By the way, cool change with the orchestration in there. Who who did that? I mean, I know John Boylan was uh, involved with you guys. By the way, did you ever ask him about Boston while you were working with him? Did you ever say, uh, hey? No, not, not that much. Um, I mean, to be honest, like I was very focused on my own thing. And I, you know, to me, more than a feeling was, was a song. I, I, with the greatest respect, I don't consider Boston to be a band that I would list in my list of well you're very different your music the music you create is very very, very different yeah. yeah yeah but cool change the orchestration at the end is very Paul Buckmaster ish you know we've talked about spirituality and and, and uh, quite a bit in, in I think the first interview or the second where you know the best times of my life were the times where I paid attention to things best times of my life was or when I was able to say okay you're working from here to here unless something springs on you, you know, but you work from here to here, this is resting time, go meditate, you know, go talk to your, I mean, I'm not a religious guy, but go talk to your maker, go talk to your guides or whoever, but there's some, you know, you feel it, you know, it's there. The best times of my life where I'd stop and, and look at people and r realize that, that we have so much more in common than we ever did. And years ago, I stopped doing that and I just started getting back to it now. Yeah, well, you see, um, you keep saying, I'll, I'll do a little psychotherapy on you now. You keep saying, I'm not a religious guy, I'm not a religious guy. You don't, I would recommend you don't need to even say that. I think that be, because religion is um, um, like if you're in the Catholic Church or if you're a, if you're a Muslim or and you sit down and you go on the mat and pray five times a day, that that's an activity of being religious, okay? But but what I um, think is you are very you are interested in spiritual matters. So rather than say like the the Americans say they might say well are you religious and I I say no but I believe in Jesus Christ I believe in Buddha I believe in, in Zarathustra uh, in terms of I'm interested in the spirit world and of the great entities that have come through in history. I'm interested in the spiritual content of the Hindu religion, the Buddhist religion, the Islamic religion, not the not the religion, the activity of the religions that all these things have become, because then it becomes dogma. So I'm interested in what the, Steiner said, that you cannot uh, um, separate the spirit world from the physical world. It's all the one. And so when I go for a walk in the bush, or I live in beautiful bush in Australia, like I see the trees and the birds and everything as companions from uh, that that are all part of this wonderful spiritual world that we live in. It's it's not about <clears throat> and and there is this this one spiritual world, and it's not about well you're a Catholic and you're a <clears throat> Islamic and we can't agree. It's nothing about the dogma of this of the religion that's the problem in the world that we've divided it into if you don't believe this then i don't want to know you or i'm going to war with you because you're this and that that's not it let's forget about all of that um it's about well i'm interested in the spirit you clearly are and because you see it in your children you see it in your partner you see it in the people that you talk to all the time when I'm talking to someone, I'm talking to their soul, not to their face or their what they're wearing or anything like that. They're a, a soul that's come into my presence for an amount of time. And that's what, if we treated everyone like that, that, that they are, they are a, a soul approaching us as opposed to a person who's famous or not famous or somebody I can get something from or uh, I won't be talking to him because I know that he, that he's an atheist. I don't want to know. Talk to him. I know that she's. Um, I don't know. Whatever. Um, you, you say, well, they're your beliefs. Some of them ill-conceived. Some of them not ill-conceived. But that's not you. You're just a, a spirit soul, soul living on the planet. No better or worse than me. You just got a different way of doing it. And if you choose to be a, an atheist, and uh, then I would say, well, if that's, if that's for now, maybe you'll think differently tomorrow. But I, the point is not to judge it. Yeah. You see, when you're in 
in a religious um, organization, there's a certain amount of judgment by default there because you're saying, well, look, we believe this and all these other people don't believe that. So we're judging. And, and, and nobody's got all the facts anyway. Yeah. That's what's so, so insane about it. You can't prove any of that. So you could just have to accept a person as they are and just say, well, they're a struggling soul the same way as I am. So, so you, uh, any person that's, that's even interested in talking to another person like you do, of course you're a spiritual being. You're interested in finding out what people, what makes people tick and what can I learn from that. And then if you take something away from an interview you do, then that's a spiritual experience. Every time. Yeah. So you're having uh, a, an experience, a, a spiritual experience. So I think that's nothing to do with religion. It's just, um, uh, to, to me, the, the most important thing in a human relationship is finding someone that you can talk to and hopefully learn something from that you didn't, know or have any interest in before you met that person. That to me is the most important reason as to why we need to connect in, in community. Because you don't want to just speak to someone that just knows everything you know or you yeah. oh, I want to learn something different. Yes. You know, lately uh, someone was asking me, uh, uh, Jason Chef of uh, the guy who replaced Peter Zatera in Chicago. Yeah. And uh, he asked me, because uh, we communicated a lot, but we never saw each other. We never talked like this. So we talked for three hours, like kind of like our conversation. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, he said that, uh, he asked me, he says, well, what have you learned the most from talking to the people you talk to? I says, more things about life than the okay. hits, because that's kind of how I'm wired anyway. And if I can veer it towards who they really are, or what they really believe, or the important things in their lives... The audience responds to that. It's interesting. It does. I mean, the salacious stuff they always do, and that's fine. Uh, but but they, they do. He, and I, he said, uh, I wake up every morning pretending I'm in a Hallmark Hall of Fame film. I said, what do you mean? My God. He says, well, I wake up every morning pretending that I'm really 20 years older, but I've come back to this age to get a." He says, that's my little, everyone's got little tricks, right? He says, that's my trick. And then he went on and on about, you know, this kind of stuff that you talk about and I talk about. And those are the most interesting things to talk with another human being of. You, you know, you go, you talk about the weather and that's the exchange. You make a connection at Starbucks with someone. But if you talk about the other stuff, that's a bonus. That's real nice if you could talk about something a little deeper. Well, I think that that's the big advantage of the the Zoom calls and things today that we never had back in the day. Because no, normally by the time you, you got through... Uh, where did they get the name of the band from? What's your next album? What, what town are you going to next? That's the end of the interview. Yeah. You, you never did the long form interview because once you get all that housekeeping out of the way, then you can then start talk about other things that are act that are actually more more interesting. And I think this is why um, channels like you've got and and there are there are others that are just so interesting. And it's why live TV in Australia, at least, is just dying a death. Everyone's on YouTube Suffering watching. Suffering here. Suffering here, too. Yeah, uh, but you see, because this content is more interesting. I would rather sit down and spend an hour of my life uh, listening to somebody uh, that I'm interested in listening to than just watching, you know, the 10th the rerun of some show that you've seen a billion times. And this is why this is more – and that's why – uh, it, it's the Netflix series. I mean, that, that's another thing that we could do. I mean, I I, I would have enough material w from the LRB uh, story and this musical to, to do a four part, six part Netflix series. That that could be another way of getting our story out. But this is what people want this day. They just don't want. Well, there's many people that don't just want the surface stuff anymore. They want to dig down and and they want to try and not just be entertained, but be educated and learn something that they're interested in. And that's, that's a fantastic format for it. And this is the, see, this is the wonderful thing that you're doing and others like you in that it's the service you're giving to other people. You see, that that's the, the only way you can have success in the world. You've got to give 
to others. I, I've done it through my songwriting. I've given and my music that's in, enriched people's lives because they've gone and purchased it. Well, you're doing the same in that you're putting your time and effort into creating so-called entertainment, but it's not just entertainment. It's it, it's a teaching. We're teaching each other. Each other, I've taught through my songwriting um, for those that are willing to listen and that, that seek it out. You're teaching through your interviews and, and allowing people to express themselves, and some people will respond really positively to it. Others won't care, but it doesn't matter. If, if you, if, at least you're providing the, the forum for somebody to have the opportunity to say something that may help someone. That's what it's about because we're all trying to raise together. Uh, I wrote a, I wrote a, um, there's a line in my song, The Net, uh, that was on the Net album, and it says, uh, we're going as fast as the slowest one in our race. <laughs> That's a good line. And, and what that means is that we have a responsibility to drag everyone up at the same rate. You can't be up here when there are people down here and you can't be down here if there are people up here. And so the people, we, we're coming up together and that that's everything from the environment to where we were talking earlier about the, the wars and all that sort of stuff. We're, we're, we're on the same situation, whether it be climate change or whatever. So we have to be mindful that we're, we're responsible one person at a time individually for bringing everybody to uh, a, a higher consciousness than, than they had maybe last week or the next thing. Mm -hmm. and it's just it's just talking about stuff, and then one day the light goes on, and they think, "Well, uh, you know, well, I, I've recently become vegan," and 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 so many many people are saying, "Okay, not having dairy anymore. We're going to go plant based." That's starting to happen worldwide. No judgment on people in my own family. I've only got the one son is vegan, the rest all eat, eat meat. That's fine. It's not an issue. But it's at some point to be able to make a statement and then suddenly McDonald's and the like are starting to making plant-based. So, so there's just a change in consciousness by people being prepared to say what they believe and and then people saying, well, I think that's a good idea. I think I'll I'll do that. I'm going to give that a shot. That's what you're, you're providing a format for that. He's such an interesting chap. I love talking to Graham Goebel. Little did I know that in the late 70s, when I was buying their albums, I would get a chance to talk to B. Bertles, Graham Goebel, and Glenn Shorick about those great songs that helped me grow up. I'm sure they influenced you as well. We'll have more from Graham Goebel in the next few days. Remember, join our Patreon, get early access to videos and bonus material. The link's in the description. If you want to help the channel make a donation, there's links there too as well. But share our videos, comment on them, subscribe to our channel. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take care of yourself.